Hey everybody, welcome back to The Clutch Files from Reach Out Reptiles. You like that name? That was Thomas. Good job, Thomas. I like the name. Anyways, in the last video, we talked about Clutch 23014, and you guys said you liked it and you wanted more. Well, hang on to your butts, because this one, Clutch 20, is about to get pretty complicated. So if you guys wanna follow along the entire history of this clutch on social media, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, then follow hashtag CL23020. This clutch was all about reaching for the stars and trying to bring together the culmination of a project that we've been working on here for literally over a decade now at Reach Out Reptiles. The ultimate brainchild of this clutch when we started all those years ago was try to get an annery mocha. Now annery and albino had already been done together but breeding mocha into the albino you get those beautiful dark contrasting mochinos and if you can breed two mochinos together you can actually get the visual mocha which is so dark it doesn't even look like it could be a strain of albinism at all. The very first time I saw the original wild caught adult mocha that was owned by Sal Daddy Retix I knew I had to have this morph bred into annery for the combo. Now at the time, Reach Out Reptiles as a business didn't even exist yet. It was just Garrett and his buddies trying to breed for some snakes. So we had a purple Superdorf Snow sent over to Chris Brown from Vital Exotics. You remember that guy? And he did a breeding loan. It was like a crazy three-way split to try to bring all these advanced genetics together with Sal Daddy Retix. Sal Daddy had that original mocha which he had bred to a Sunfire to get Sunfire het mochas. And we took one of those animals, we as in Chris, myself, and Sal, and bred it to a purple Superdorf Snow. Now that Superdorf Snow is 50% Kalatoa, 25% Jam. That was the highest percentage in Superdorf they had at the time. So the results of the breeding would have made a very low percentage Superdorf that would technically be considered a mainland. But the real idea was to get that Mochino morph from mainland starting at least down the road of Superdorf and size reduction while plugging it into the annery so that we could get those difficult to produce with double heterozygous mocha anneries. So because we took that Sunfire Het Mocha, bred it to a purple snow, the resulting babies, the, the best one that could have come out, was a Sunfire Mochino Het Annery. We actually ended up getting three of those, but I've kind of consolidated all those genetics here at Reach Out Reptiles, you know, over the years. So we actually have them all here now. So the breeding I did was to take my 25% Kalatoa, low percentage Superdorf male, he had some jamp in there as well, to a 75% Kalatoa tiger head albino. That was actually the highest percentage Superdorf anything head albino I had as a female. And the resulting babies were 50% Superdorf, little bit of jamp, 6.25% jampea as well. And we got a number of different results in the codoms and recessives all mixed together. We held back a female from that clutch. Are you following this project so far? Her name was Mata Hari. Uh, was one of my personal holdbacks that I ended up selling to our very own G.I. Joe, the sales guy here at Reach Out Reptiles, who grew her up. She was a Sunfire Tiger and she was Pos Het Annery. Now, she was Het from a Mochino, and I'm not sure that the industry even agrees on the way to say this, but you can't be Het for a Mochino. Mochino is the combination of mocha and albino, but it's allelic. So it doesn't work like two different morphs, it works like one morph. You get the two sides from mom and dad, you get a visual mochino, and then when you breed it to make hets, half of the clutch ends up being 100% het albino, the other half of the clutch ends up being 100% het mocha, which was the rarer part of the equation in this case. The problem is they're hets, they're not visual. You don't know which ones are which. So Mata Hari was a sun tiger that was either het albino or het mocha, and she was also at a 50-50 shot of carrying the annery gene as well. If all of the statistics aligned and the stars were in our favor, Matahari would have been a Sunfire, Tiger, Het Mocha, Het Annery. And we would just have to breed her to some kind of snow-making male. That'd be an Annery albino, whether Hets or visuals, to bring all that out. But the risk was, that's on the high end. 
If everything lined up against her, she would have been a not head anery and only a head albino. Superdorf Sun Tiger head albino. Now that's a cool snake on its own, but it, it basically pulls her out, or at least says that she doesn't have any genetics to contribute to making mochas or mochinos later. She could make them, but you'd have to bring it back in from somewhere else. Okay, you got it? So mom has a whole lot on the line. She is a decently small female at 50% Kalatoa, not what I would consider like an ultimately refined high percentage superdorf from the size department, but definitely a very manageable animal. So if we could pull out mocha and anery in that size and then move forward to the next generation to shrink them down even more, that would be amazing. Enter the sire. This is the father of the clutch. We wanted to pull together some really crazy looks, some very small genetics, and you guys know when it comes to snow stuff, the bloodline that Richard Bilbo is working with is second to none. So we have a male that was produced by Richard Bilbo. He was a 75% Kalatoa, 12.5% Jampea, very high percentage, 87.5 total, only 12.5% mainland left in there, and a visual albino, purple albino. Now he was 66% Poss head anery because in the generation that he was bred, that was as good as you could get. So that's one more kind of a molehill that we you may find out was really a mountain as we do the breeding together. So remember, we have to find out if mom is either a head albino or a het mocha. She's possibly a head anery, and the dad is a visual albino, but he's only possible head anery too. So there's all these different outlier circumstances in this breeding where we just don't really know what we're gonna get from a genetic standpoint. From the super dwarf and size standpoint, we're pretty happy with where we're at. The bloodlines from both are awesome. The mom is literally third, fourth generation away from that wild caught mocha and being selectively bred, you know, mostly by us here at Reach Out Reptiles to get the looks that we want. And you know it improves everything when you infuse those Richard Bilbo albinos in there. So the day arrives, G.I. Joe and myself go down into the snake room to start, you know, checking the eggs and we see that the clutch is hatching. We look at baby after baby after baby. Now remember, if the female was a het mocha, that was the first question we had to solve, and the male was an albino, then you would get half a clutch of visual mochinos and half a clutch of wild type normals that were het for albino. But if there was an albino baby in that clutch, we knew that she was a head albino. Third or fourth egg in, what do we get? A beautiful purple albino baby. So no het mocha. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And then as the rest of the babies came out of the eggs, we noticed neither did we have any visual anneries in the clutch. Some of them looked very annery, but a lot of times head anneries, while they're just hatching out in the, in the eggs, they can look very much like a visual anery. No visual anneries came out of the clutch. In that case, because both mom and dad were possible het carriers for the anery morph, it doesn't prove or disprove either one in and of itself right there because it doesn't say that the mom is not a head anery because maybe the dad wasn't. Or it doesn't say that the dad was not a head anery because maybe the mom wasn't. So unfortunately, we just moved forward. The only thing we proved is that one or the other, mom or dad, is not a head anery. We just don't know which one. Now, the head anery thing is interesting. I've heard in the carpet python community, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, with their azanthics, they've kind of recognized it as almost an incomplete dominant mutation now because they can pick out the heads very easily. With the reticulated pythons, it works similarly, but it's not always so subtle. In other words, sometimes you can get an animal that really looks like it's carrying that anery gene, which means it probably does. Now, I know this is borderline suspicion. We would never sell an animal like that or anything, but when you pick an animal to hold back, if you're looking for a purple het snow and you get one that looks a lot like a snow, you're probably better off. Take a look at these images of Kumal, the father, and you tell me if he looks like a normal orangey or yellow purple super dwarf, or does he look like a snow to you? 
Well, let's go ahead and pull back the cover and see what we actually got. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that story of like how much work it takes just to have an attempt at one of these new genetic mutations. And I think that that's why, you know, I mean, it helps give perspective anyway on why some of these things like a visual snow chino cost so much money the first couple that are made. So what we actually got in this clutch were a combination of beautiful 62.5% Kalatoa and 9.375% Jamp. That's probably not enough to do a whole lot. I just call it like sprinkling a little jamp sauce on top of there. As I always like to do, let's go ahead and start with the wild type babies, if there are any from a clutch like this, just so that we can see in color and pattern influence what traits these babies are getting from mom, what they're getting from dad, how do they look, and, and what do we want to breed forward. Remember, the morphs can be added in at any time and kind of forced in by Mendelian genetics, but the selective breeding of getting like really nice looking babies is much more difficult to do. Okay, these wild types are rich and vibrant in color. They have very deep orangey browns that are gonna make for really nice albinos. You'll see that in a minute. And they also have a heavy concentrated pattern, a really nice mix between Matahari and Kumals, different genetics going on. You can see a lot of the heavy Kalatoa influence. That is that they have a lot of saddles, much more pattern than a mainland or your, your kind of standard retic would. And it's, it's very chaotic, lots of speckling, lots of misplaced portions of pattern. And sometimes the tail pattern, especially on these bloodlines are particularly jagged and lovely. Building up from there, if you add the Sunfire Morph into that kind of a bloodline look, this is what you're gonna get. You still have the chaotic pattern that you have, but the Sunfire pulls and clumps the pattern together nicely, making it extra thick and bold in many places. It oftentimes, it will reduce or completely erase the silver side flames on the side and inject an even brighter dose of that orange into the brown base color that these babies have. The Sunfire is typically considered a color mutation, but it very much affects the pattern as well. Take a look at the tail on that Sunfire baby. Mmm, love it. The next mutation that you could add into that combination would be Tiger. Now, Tiger is definitely a pattern mutation that reduces pattern, stretches it out, and lightens it. And when you add Tiger into that Sunfire, what you're gonna see, you continue to have the clean, kind of clumpy, and almost like watermarked edges on the black of the pattern from the Sunfire, pulling it down out of that Tiger. But the Tiger tends to move a, remove a lot of the melanin in the base and a lot of the speckling as well. So you end up with cleaner sides, a brighter orange, and oftentimes one of the visual markers of Sunfire in a Tiger is when that dorsal pattern stripe comes down and connects into the side rosette, just like that. Pretty cool to see. That's the Sunfire Tiger or Sun Tiger baby. Now remember, we didn't get any anneries, which means we also didn't get any snows or snow chinos, but what we did get were purple albinos. The high percentage Kalatoa purple has been a classic mainstay of pet keepers that are interested in keeping superdorf reticulated pythons, and for good reason. They have a rich orangey red base as hatchlings that continues to brighten as they grow, and a nice dark purple pattern. Nothing like a mochino, but dark amongst the vibrant lines of albino. And it adds for a lot of really rich, kind of like sky blue and lavender tones within that dorsal pattern, added to that beautiful combination of Matahari and Kumal's genetics. If we build in those other incomplete dominant genes of Sunfire and Tiger on top of the purple, then you'll see the same characteristics I was describing on top of a whole new color tone. So with the purple Sunfire, again, it's going to reduce or eliminate the silver side spears going down the sides of the animal. And what was replaced originally with a dark, rich red brown is now vibrant, beautiful, orangey color. The Kalatoas are very heavily patterned and very dark. So Sunfire, especially in the hatchlings, is a lot harder to see, but if you get up close on that dorsal pattern, you can really see kind of almost that watercolor mark going from the purple portion 
into the orange, a beautiful fade there. The purple tiger, on the other hand, is a, a lighter, brighter snake, much less of a red, more of a orangey yellow, and will get much brighter as an adult in the yellow tones. But you can see that elongated and reduced dorsal pattern that is the classic tiger everybody knows and loves. Well, there you have it, guys. What could have been a clutch full of high percentage super dwarf sun tiger snow chinos turned into a beautiful, albeit not what we were really shooting for. Oh, we'll try again next year. Beautiful purple sunfire and tiger combinations. It's one thing to take a genetic paired breeding and plug it into like a morph calculator and see all the possibilities that come out, but it's another thing altogether when you're working with living, breathing animals and randomized genetics to actually see what it is that you can come up with. Now, from a bloodline standpoint, I'm super happy with the way that this turned out. Were all of the different morphs in there that we wanted? No, they're not. And we'll have to try again next year, or it might take a couple of years to get that next generation of Snow Chino stuff coming. But I'm not going anywhere because I don't have anything else to do anyway. If you guys enjoyed that video, kind of the hype versus the reality, let us know in the comments section below if we should keep doing videos like this. Do you wanna see more babies from the Reach Air Reptiles 2023 season? Again, you can follow hashtag CL23020 if you wanna follow the updates on these babies as they grow, no matter where their new homes end up being. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss anything.